Now, this equation can be solved very, very easily if we can make a clever change of variable. Well, truthfully, it doesn't have to be clever because uh, it is sort of obvious from just looking at this operator uh, or other operators uh, acting on this object in here. So, what do we do? We take the variable u to be defined as c t minus r and we take v to be defined as c t plus r. So if we want to transform this equation in the inverse direction, what do we do? We add u plus v and what do we get? We get 2 c t so from this we can get t to be 1 over 2 c times u plus v and then of course we can do the same for r so if i take v minus u what do we get we get twice r and from this we can get r equals half v minus u all right so now now we take the corresponding differentiation that is partial derivative with respect to u can be written as partial derivative uh, of r with respect to u and then partial derivative with respect to r plus this is basically the chain rule that we are trying to employ and d t d u and partial derivative with respect to t so this results in the following if we take the partial derivative of r with respect to u we get this and if we take partial derivative of t with respect to u, then we get 1 over 2c and then this. So, what do they give us? Now, if we factor out this half, then what we are left with is 1 over c partial derivative with respect to t minus partial derivative with respect to r. Notice this is almost the same operator we have in here. So similarly, if I do the same thing with respect to v, what do we get? We get partial derivative with respect to v equals the same chain rule we have just employed above plus partial of t with respect to v times partial of with respect to t. So that gives us, so for example, uh, for r we get half, right, and then this, and then for this one we get plus 1 over 2c ddt. So in that case, we take the half away and then we're left with 1 over c partial with respect to time plus partial with respect to r. So then finally our equation becomes 1 over 4 second order partial derivative with respect to uh, first uh, u and then v of this function rg uh, which is 0 and we can send this 1 over 4 to the other side and this is still 0 on the right hand side and this equation here have two solutions the first solution is simple rg equals a function g of v 
and another solution says r d is a function of u. Now, since u equals c t minus r and v equals c t plus r, if I remember correctly, then I write this one with a plus sign as a subscript and this one as a minus as a subscript. And if I substitute that in here, I get d plus, which is a function of c t plus r and g minus which is a function of c t minus r why because if this is a function of v if we differentiate with respect to u we get zero or if it is completely dependent on u then when we differentiate it with respect to v we get zero so therefore our solutions can only take these forms so the Green's function in this circumstance is given as 1 over r and then g plus minus which is an arbitrary function of c t and then we have plus minus r. Now if we do remember at the beginning we said that when we get the general form of the solution we can plug in uh, t minus t prime instead of t and r minus r prime instead of r. Right? So then that gives us the most general form of the Green's function which is a function dependent on r t and the source is located on r prime t prime and that is given by 1 over r minus r prime and then we have g plus minus and within it we get c of t minus t prime plus minus uh, r minus r prime uh, modulus right and this is the general form now d here cannot be just any arbitrary function it has constraints on it and when we plug this equation back into our original equation we should get the desired outcome so that means this one is yet to be tested to solve our required differential equation green's equation which is the differential equation for green's function so now if we act nabla square on g what do we get we get nabla squared acting on one over r and then g plus minus and then this is a function of c t and then plus minus r. So we know that Laplacian is the divergence of the gradient. So if we act the gradient operator first, what do we get? We get 1 over r and then gradient of g plus minus and then we have g plus minus uh, times the gradient of 1 over r. Now we need to be patient if we carry on acting the divergence on the whole object inside the parenthesis. What do we get? We get the gradient of 1 over r uh, dotted with gradient of g plus minus plus uh, 1 over r and then the Laplacian of g uh, and then it acts on the second term we get the gradient of g dotted with the gradient of 1 over r so notice that's the first term and the third term they are the same and finally g 
plus minus times the Laplacian acting on 1 over r. And notice Laplacian of 1 over r, this is something we already know, which is uh, 4 pi negative 4 pi and then delta of r and then time we have here a g plus minus multiplied with this so therefore we will keep having g plus minus in here all right so uh then we can do something very interesting we can notice that this one here and the third term here they bring us twice right so this one is working with this one as well and this gradient is simply r hat over r squared and then this one here since we know that it depends only on r and not theta and phi this will give us r hat and then the derivative of g with respect to r all right let us uh, calculate this term here so this is 1 over r which we already have and the laplacian of g is simply survived by the radial term so we get 1 over r squared and then the derivative with respect to r acting on r squared derivative with respect to r acting on g right so so let us calculate this in details 1 over r squared i'm sorry in fact 1 over r cubed i believe 1 over r cubed and then the derivative acts on this thing here which gives us uh, first twice r and then derivative of g with respect to r and then plus r squared derivative second order derivative with respect to r isn't it and then uh, if we simply multiply it we get 2 divided by r squared and then the first order derivative and then plus 1 over r excuse me this should be plus and then the second order derivative all right and notice this term here is simply nothing but negative 2 divided by r squared and then the first order derivative of g with respect to r so this term here cancels this term here right and so finally what we get is the following we get 1 over r and then the second order derivative with respect to r minus 4 pi delta of r and then g plus minus right uh, we also have plus minus here as well so this was the Laplacian of acting on g so now if we do have uh, the del inversion operator we get laplacian of g minus 1 over c squared the second order time derivative uh, of g this should be equal to what simply this one participates so 1 over r and then we have negative right and then 1 by c squared d2 dt2 and then uh, minus d2 dr2 uh, the second order derivative with respect to r acting on g plus minus minus 4 pi delta of r times g plus 1 now if you do remember we have calculated this earlier and this was zero because g actually satisfied this equation here so what we are only left with is negative 4 pi delta 
of r times g plus minus. Well, if you do remember, this should be equal to negative delta of r and delta of t. So, if g is a function of any variable s, right, then that is simply comparing these two will simply be delta of s, right? So therefore, we have g plus minus equals delta of ct uh, plus minus r divided by 4 pi r, right? Because we also have a 4 pi here. So then finally, we can write the full form in here. We write g uh, equals uh, 1 over r minus r prime, right? And then we have delta c and then times t minus t prime. And then we have plus minus, we have r minus r prime. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our final answer. This is the desired Green's function that we have been looking for all along.